Guess what those are? Keys. Hey, pretty smart. Yep. Find the missing key. That wall right there. Mm, right there. Yep. That's not the one I dropped. That's the one I didn't put in. Oh. What, the, what are these? Oh. Key installation pliers. Oh, okay. Somebody forgot to get those. So we have to shut the video off. Now it's not going to be a long, it's going to be a short one again. They're going to sit there and thank me for that. <laughs> okay, this key sticks up on the back side back there. You've got to hold it with your screwdriver, rotate this until it drops in, then it goes in. Did you get any of that? I tried. Yeah, that's close enough. That's all we can ask. Yep. Okay. So you got the oil in there already? Drop it in. Drops in. Put your finger on both gears so they don't fall out. Go over and do this side. That half ass primes the pump. Not very good, but a little bit. Okay. Now you want to rotate this around so that the key, we can get to it. When you push this all the way in, you have to have access to the key. Because see, first you got to put the gear in there, you can't just shove it straight in. Uh, you brought the gear with you? Get the, yeah, I got it right there. Yeah, you brought it? Good, it's a good thing I had a preset. Mm -hmm. Now you notice how you get a big chamfer and a low chamfer. The big chamfer pops the clip off easier than the small chamfer. Which one do you want out? The, the small chamfer. Oh, you're pretty smart. Yeah. And you put that in the direction you're going to have the shaft over there. And that drops down. You slide in a little bit. And then for the hell of it, I'm going to throw a bolt over here just to kind of keep it from falling off over there. Okay, so now you have to line up the key way right there. Then you have to take these. What were these again? The key holding installation tool. pliers. Oh, installation pliers. That sounds better. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta kind of fish this through that hole right there in the dark. Because you have no light, and I don't have any light. And the pump just slid out. Because it doesn't want to go in that groove. Here's the oil pump shaft. Might have a burr on it. Because I didn't think about checking it for that. It's usually isn't a problem. It appears that if there was a burr in there, it's gone. More likely I just misaligned and I didn't have it right. <laughs> but it sounds better when it's there fault. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now you take the gear and you rotate it until the keyway's on the back side over there. Because you want this clip to go in there and you want the key to be on the back side, not the front side where the groove is. Now you notice that somebody accidentally bent the clip overlapped? Oh yeah, yeah. I wonder who would do that. I have no idea anybody would do something like that. Now you have a radius side and you got a sharp edge. Sharp edge goes to the outside so it sticks in the groove better. Notice how the pliers don't want to work now. See, now I did that because now it has more tension on it. Because we want it to be tight on here, unlike that other side was loose. Because when you open this thing up to go in here, you have to keep opening it up until it gets in there. Then you get the hell out. And if you're lucky, it's tight on the shaft. Look at that. See how it's tight on there? Good and tight. Now if that just spins in there, it can come off. If it's tight, it doesn't come off. Understand? Yep. Now, sometimes those break when you bend them like I do. When you do it just right, it works. Okay, so now we got that part in there. Now we flip over this other side here. And that's how the oil is still where it belongs. Yep. Make sure it's clean. That's 
smear a little oil where it doesn't belong. A lot of times I like to take a little extra goop and hit up here at the top where it likes to leak every now and then. On stock pumps I like to leak right on this edge right up here. There's not much hole in it because the bolts are way down here. Ah, uh, gotcha. You can also hit it right on the edge of these holes here, but it's kind of dangerous. But Remember how that gas goes real thin right there? Yeah. <laughs> but we don't want to put the goop inside the gear, gear cavity. And we already got the gasket previously stuck onto there. Hopefully it's stuck in the right spot. And take this out. And if you had a Harley pump, you'd have to put these two top ones in and tighten them up already. But being a smooth top pump, that ain't an issue. Now if you just go shoving these bolts through, you can catch on the edge of the gasket and shove the gasket right out of it. So you got to be careful. I always like getting at least two of them in there. Stick that on there like that. And then these two going afterwards. Now they put a slot on there so you can like slide in, I guess. I'd rather have the hole all the way on there myself. But That's interesting. They have a theory about how you're supposed to assemble it. Probably when you're on a bike and there's like a transmission in a way that might help. Gotcha. But my thing is if you got to fix your pump, more than likely there's other issues. So probably gonna pull the motor anyway. So you want to get all your bolts started. Pretty much run them almost all the way down while we're at it. Why don't you switch sides there? Okay. Now we have a certain amount of gap in here. See the gap? Yeah. I always like to center up the gaps. So you get the bolts closed but not bottomed. So you want to see how much gap you got. See how there's less than it was because I'm all the way down now. Yeah. And you just want to kind of center it in between the two. If you notice I moved over on me, see that I did that. <laughs> see the pumps going all the way to the extreme. Keep that one tight. Now this one here, this one I kind of like just kind of center it up so it's clean looking. You're lucky, it might actually stay there. Stay relatively close, see? And you start torquing them down. So it looks pretty close. Torque on it. Now these two bolts here are pulling over as I'm torquing them because, because the slot's really wide. That thin washer and the bolt are just pushing right into it. Oh, okay. So I can only put so much torque on that side. There you go, that looks a little bit cleaner. Yeah, a lot of pumps on. And we got this down here on the angle, so you got room for a hose right here. And we just got room for these hoses coming out. Nice. Okay, now we get this keys in here so we can see if this pump rotates. So we're gonna go get up some new keys for you. Not that one. There's two brand new ones. Haven't been ground on yet. The Jim's still pinion loose. shaft didn't come with them? No. And they're still pretty loose in there too, so the, the grooves are cut a little bit thick on this one. Seems like you've got to beat them in or they're too damn loose. So. Okay, here's your oil pump drive gear. The beveled side goes in because it goes up against the edge of the shaft and there's a little bit of a radius in there. 
and obviously you want the key to go where the key is. So once you get the key started on there, you rotate the pump backwards to the motor, actually, like this, and it'll, should grab a hold of the pump and shove it in. Lost my key. Got it. Okay. So it's always putting pressure on that shaft. So if you roll it backwards, it just kind of shoot, shoots it in. Yeah. There it is. I'll actually go forward on this. I'm backwards. I'm backwards. Rotate the motor forward and shove it in. Gotcha. But that way it keeps the key in there and everything. See how the key's up in there right now? Yeah. And the pump obviously was the motor turning over easily, so the pump's not locked up. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you take your spacer, put that on there. Keep rotating forward. If you unscrew it, it goes the other way. Okay, then you take your second key, and you put your cam gear in there. You get the key up. Rotate until you catch it, see? Wiggle it on, it drops in. Sometimes you have to tap them to go on just lightly, just barely touch them, they pop on. And you got your nut right here. Now these are backwards threads, so you have to go like this. Got it. Now you could put Loctite on there if you feel like you need it. I rarely use it. Can't think of any reason why you really need it if you tighten it down. So I use the appropriate torque, which is what? I don't know, we'll see right now. That's, that it. Much. That's good. Custom made tool by Tatro. I had to fix it because someone used it, but it appears to be getting screwed up a little bit. It didn't want to go on your shaft for uh, some reason. Your nut. So I'm assuming my. Uh, Tools need to be freshened up a little bit. When you loan them out and people screw them up and destroy them for you, you have to fix them. Okay, so now we have our breather, or not a breather, we have our oil pump gear in there. And you see how much slop is in there between the key way, the snap ring and the end of the shaft? Yeah. So that's why the key can come out, especially when you get a big gap like that in there. Which is why it's not good to have those. See, there's your keyway right there. So if that clip has a gap in it, like they usually get, and the mm -hmm. key is like that, the key can come out. Oh wow! And it does happen. Even happened on one of my bikes once. Okay, rotates really good, but it's a little bit stiff. Put a little bit of oil on the teeth here. That. Freeze it up a little bit. Still got drag on it though, a little bit. Not too bad. Okay, now we gotta put the guts back in here. So we gotta go, I'm gonna pre lube it. Move more on this on. You wanna make sure some of the oil goes on the side of the body. That way this gets a little bit lubricant on it, not just dry. This had a little bit of light oil on it when they took it apart. <laughs> Make sure there's no chips down in there. Okay, that just drops in. The ball just drops in. This does not go on the ball, it goes on the pressure side. A little light one goes on the ball. Now it works a lot easier if you use this as a guide drop that right down there for you. And if you use a socket it makes it a little bit easier. But if you know how to use your fingers you can do it too. Hmm. You want to make sure the o-ring is in there and working. You know, there. Yeah. My 
Oh, that's the problem. These fittings in the way. So the socket doesn't work very good too, it jams in. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one up too, because until you get a gauge, we're gonna go without gauge. Alright. And go gaugeless. Okay, so now we have a tightening wrench here. In the screwdriver slot, you can clear this fitting, but obviously the socket doesn't work it. Okay. Now for torque. Alright. Oil pump is now installed. <clears throat> you can see all the fittings where you can get to them. Yep. Okay, now we got to check our cam gear clearances. Okay, here's our breather valve. We already know that fits, so we're going to go ahead and put some lube on that. Stick it up in there. Don't want that running dry. There's your timing marks right there. A little dab of oil right there will help hold this on. Here, put our two things, two gear, <clears throat> two of those down there. Okay, here's your tummy marks over here. We want to make sure they line up over here. See, and with this. So where's your mark on this one? There's no mark. Yeah, there is. That's right there. Yeah. You have to rotate the motor over to it. Mark goes up. That one's off. That one's on. So, mark, mark. Okay. And remember, we already put the plug in there. Otherwise, we have to, don't forget to. Yep. Okay. So now we take our gasket, put it back up on there for one more try. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lubricate the shaft here a little bit. I'm going to go heat this a little bit too while we're at it. Okay. Still goes on tight. Way tight. Got to lock the motor up. Yeah. That's not good. It's not the cam. We know the breather and the cam are all good because they were in there before. Gotta make sure that's not binding up or anything. It's not. So that means the um, <clears throat> other parts are the problem. What was the other part? The <coughs> Jesus. Was it the pinion shaft and the pinion shaft was in there before too? All the gears? But the gears tight. Not tight, I mean the cam's loose. Mm -hmm. So what the hell happened? I don't know. Me either. We didn't try turning the crank over before, remember? Obviously, we have a binding condition. Let's see, what's a big screwdriver at?
situation is pretty loose here. It's hard to believe that's binding. We've only had it on there about 20 times already. That's in, I don't know why it's binding. It's binding there. Nope. It's that, hitting there. We didn't, that hasn't changed from the time before we put it in. We had that all clearance, remember? Yep. <clears throat> so what's different? Something is different. Fifty horsepower. See, it's not the cam gear being tight. See the clearance of the teeth? Mm hmm. They're not tight. Pushing back and forth like this on the gear too. So this is going to have a little bit of a click, 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 click noise in your motor. It sounds like loose valves. Oh, it's just the cam gear. Yeah. You have to change the cam gear if you want to get rid of that. If you get too tight, it makes a whine. If you make it too loose, it makes it sounds like loose valves. Oh, okay. So that's that's the loose valve one. It's not real bad, but it's got a little bit in there. So we know the two cam gears aren't jammed in or tight, causing the interference. Cause it to be tight like this. <clears throat> 